This video is sponsored by Square Enix. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint this Ultramarines Land Raider. Exactly the same kind of Ultramarines Land Raider you can find in the latest DLC for Power Wash Simulator. That's right, it's time to clean up 40k. Make sure you watch to the end so I'll tell you a little bit about the game and also give you details on how you can actually win this exact model. All of the techniques I show you here can be applied to any flavour of Space Marine tank. So let's get power washing. I'm, I mean painting. Let's get painting. First off, I'm going to show you the breakdown of components. Now, I've got the main body of the tank. I've also got the sponsons off to the side, as well as any covers that I'm going to paint a different colour. I've left some of the tracks on and glued some of the tracks onto the model, just so you can have a little look at how easy or difficult it is, depending on the choice you make when you build the model. The first thing I'll show you is how to get a nice little gradient here by using spray cans. So essentially I've sprayed this entire model black and I've then sprayed it with McCrag Blue Spray. And what I'm looking to do is just to layer this up so I'm leaving it slightly darker at the bottom and then I'm concentrating more towards the top so I get more of an opaque coat. You get this really nice gradient. The first thing we need to do is start to block out the colours and the first one I'm going to do is silver. Now the colour I'm using for this is Lead Belcher. I've thinned it down with a little bit of water to make sure that it flows nicely off my brush. As I'm working across the model, you can see that this water is actually leaving some bubbles in the path of where my brush has been. So just either give them a little blow or just work your brush back through them to pop them. There's quite a lot of silver metal on this model and that's why I'm choosing to do this first because if we do make any mistakes, we'll cover them up in the next few stages. So I'm looking at things like all of the vents, I'm looking at the radar dish, any other elements as well. Now I've already sprayed a lot of them lead belts just so I don't have to worry about painting those, but I will obviously have to paint the tracks on the vehicle as well. Just to add a little bit of variation, I'm gonna paint the tops of the exhaust with some Balthazar gold. Now, if you want to paint these silver, you absolutely can. I just wanted to give a little bit of a different metallic color. So with the Balthazar gold, again, I've thinned it down with a little bit of water so it flows easier off my brush. I'm just gonna take my time working around this area. There is the potential that I'm going to have to add two coats to this because whilst it covers okay, when you do start to thin it down, it does lose some of that coverage. Once you're happy that the silver and the balls are going to dry, it's now time to give it a little bit of a shade. So the colour I'm going to use this is Null Oil, which is a black shade. And I'm going to just paint this over the entirety of the areas. Now this will cover up some of the sins you may have made in terms of your layer coverage. It'll flow into the recesses quite nicely. One thing to be aware of is you don't let it pool too heavily in one spot because even though the null oil is very thin, if it does pool, it can actually turn into a little bit of a thick oil stick. So when you paint subsequent layers over the top, it will potentially add a little bit of a bump to that layer as well. And I'll be very visible on finished product. So just take your time and get this all over the areas you wanted. It's going to take a little bit of time to dry as well because it is going to be put on in such vast amounts. So just let this go for about half an hour to an hour. You can try and speed it up with a hairdryer if you want, just make sure it's not too hot because otherwise you will get some blistering. Now while you wait for all that null oil to dry, let me tell you a little bit about this video's sponsor. As a member of the Adeptus Mechanicus, it's your singular honour to perform the ultimate purification protocol. Stationed at Grand Forge Temple 48759 within Mars's iconic Ring of Iron, you must cleanse the Imperium's illustrious instruments to appease their machine spirit. As an adept, your unstoppable crusade against filth is paired with a personal pursuit for knowledge, naturally. Your maintenance will be emboldened by accounts and field reports from the front lines, renewing your vigour to abolish these desecrations. You're going to be well equipped for this mission with a custom Mark II Aquasantica Archivus Power Washer, the perfect fusion of human and machine. Command this ruthless technology to sterilize a range of Imperial vehicles and machines. There is of course the Ultramarines Land Raider that you see in this video. There's also a Dark Angel's Deathwing Redemptor Dreadnought, the Astra Militarum Rogel Dawn Tank, the House Hawkshout Imperial Knight, and a mighty, mighty Blood Angel's Thunderhawk. The 40k TLC is available now on PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch and Steam. So make sure you check out my unique link in the description and check out the 40k DLC for Power Wash Simulator today. Now I mentioned you could win this very model that I'm painting. Unfortunately due to competition rules this is only available to entrants from the UK. 
For full details on how to enter, check out the description. For the tracks, I want to add a little bit of weathering and I want to give them a bit more of a brownie effect. So to do this, it's really nice and easy. Just make sure that null oil is dry before you start. I'm going to take some Agrax Earthshade and I'm going to paint this all over the metal tracks. So this is a nice, easy, straightforward step. Just take your time. Try not to spill any of it on the rest of the model. Now, you can probably have a look and see that there are some flecks of silver here and there. I'll show you how to fix that later on when it comes to the appropriate time. When that's completely dry, it's time to add a little bit of rust. Now, this is a very easy, straightforward effect. We're going to take some scrag brown paint. We're going to thin it down quite a lot. So it's probably about three parts water to one part paint. So it's very, very thin. We don't want it to cover. We want it to flow into recesses and deposit random bright spots across the tracks because that's going to give the impression of rust. Now, I'm not saying that the tech priests are not looking after the machines of the Space Marines. I'm just saying that it takes a little bit of wear and tear when it's out in the field. We'll start highlighting and we'll do the exhaust stacks first. So the colour I'm using is Sycorax Bronze and I'm using this with a dry brush. So I'm wiping most of the paint off the brush and then I'm just painting these in a downward motion so it just catches the top rims and leaves the bottom part in shadow so you get a nice crisp highlight. I'm going to highlight all of the silver in a very similar fashion. However, I'm not using Necron Compound, which is a dry paint. I am using Ruin Fang Steel. Now, this is more of a wet paint and it's a lot thinner than Necron Compound. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I move my dry brush over these silver areas, I don't necessarily want to just catch the edges. I want to catch quite big areas. And again, you can see that there's some silver paint flecking onto the blue armor. That's okay. Don't worry about it because it's easily fixable with a pot of McCrag blue paint. So just work your way over all of the silver areas and this will give you a nice bright silver highlight on those parts of the model that face upwards. We'll paint all of the gold areas next. So this really is just kind of an accent colour and it goes really nicely with the blue. So the colour we're using is Retributor Armour and we're just going to base all of those nice intricate details. We're looking for things like skulls, crux terminatus and any winged iconography as well. Shading the gold is really, really simple. We're going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade. And we're just going to wash this over the gold areas. It's really important that we don't flood them too much because it can look ugly and it can do the same thing as the black with the null oil where you get too much in one area and it just blisters up a little bit as it dries and leaves you with an unseemly uh, lumpy, bumpy bit on the model. We'll highlight all of the gold using Liberator Gold. Now, this is a nice bright gold and... In terms of how we highlight, we're just looking for those areas that are going to catch the most light. Where we can drag the brush along the shape of the model to get a nice crisp highlight, we will. But generally, we are just going to have to take our time with this because it's not as straightforward as perhaps some sharp, harsh armor edges are. We're also going to have to take a little bit of care about getting this on the blue because, like I said, we can fix it. But the less mistakes we make now, the more time we will speed up with later. We need to add a little bit of shade and definition to these armor panels. Now, this is fairly straightforward. Normally, I'd use something like Null Oil, but in this case, the new formula, I don't find to be dark enough. I also don't find it's got the consistency you need across the model. So what I'm doing is taking some Black Templar Contrast Paint. I'm mixing this 50-50 with Contrast Medium, so a one-to-one -one mix. I'm then going to take a brush and make sure I've got a good sharp point. I'm going to paint it straight into the recesses. In terms of where you put it, this is really easy and straightforward. You're looking for those parts where armor panels overlap or connect with each other. Also where you've got some recesses in the doors and along the side of the model. If you do happen to spill it outside of the lines, just give it a quick wipe in a downward motion with your finger. Now this isn't going to wipe it off the model. What this is going to do is give you a little bit of a water stain. So it's going to add to some of the weathering. We'll do a bit of weathering to it later on. So it looks a little bit beaten up. It's not quite factory fresh. This is probably one of the more time-consuming parts of the model, but just take your time and enjoy it because what you'll start to see is the model really coming to life right before your eyes. Now is probably a good time to fix some of the mistakes we've made. So we want to get the blue armour back to looking spick and span. To do this, we take a pot of a McCrag blue, we thin it down a little bit with some water, and then we basically just paint it over the areas where we've made mistakes. Now, it can be quite easy to make mistakes here around some of the silver we've already finished. So do take your time and just work it across those areas that need it. 
You may need to change the size of your brush through this process as well. I went through three different brush sizes. So when you're doing big armor pals, use a big brush. When you're doing some of the more intricate points, use a smaller one. We'll start the process of highlighting all of the blue next. And the color we're going to use this is Calgar Blue. And as you can see, this is a nice light blue that really does show up nicely against the McCrag Blue underneath. Now, the technique for this is really easy and straightforward. We just want to get a little bit on our brush, make sure we've got a really good tip not too much paint and then we're going to drag the brush along the sharp edge of the model and this gives you a really nice crisp highlight in terms of the areas we're going to focus on we're not going to line highlight absolutely every last bit of the model we're going to consider that the light is coming from in front and slightly above so that's going to inform what parts that we highlight so we're going to highlight all across the top of the armor we're going to highlight around some of the doors and also don't forget that you've got the sponsors now I've already based part of the sponsons with McCrag Blue from the previous step, just so they blend in with the rest of the tank a little better. I'm going to highlight those as well. Once we've finished highlighting, it's time to prepare the model for decals. Now, the decals add a really nice element. They really help the model stand out on the tabletop and display the true colours of the Ultramarines. Now, the decal sheet you get in the box is fantastic. There's some really nice iconography in there. To prepare the surface, we're just going to take a little bit of Storm Shield. We're going to thin it down with a little bit of water and paint this over all of the areas that we want to put the decals. Generally, what I'd advise you to do is to just focus on certain armor panels and paint the entirety of that armor panel with this gloss effect. While we wait for that to dry fully, I'm going to paint the Tech Marine Pilot. Now, a couple of caveats here. Well, one main caveat. That is that do not get your fingers onto the gloss varnish because you will leave fingerprint marks and it will be really ugly. To that end, I'm basing the Tech Marine with Mephiston Red. This will take two coats and you will just need to be a little careful around the blue armour. To add some shade and definition to the model, I'm going to take some Null Oil and just paint this all over the entirety of the body. Now, I was a little hasty, I didn't quite let the wash dry, but I advise you to do so. To start highlighting, take a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet, which is a nice bright red, and just focus this on those areas that are facing upwards and are going to catch the most light. I'll make a final highlight with some Wild Rider Red, which is a nice orangey red, and for this, I'm being a little bit more focused, keeping it inside the Evil Sun Scarlet from the previous stage. Next up, it's time to paint in the black elements. And things I'm looking for with this are the weapon casings. So we've got the Storm Bolter, we've also got the Heavy Bolter and the casing around the Godhammer Lance Cannons for the sponsors. And we've also got the exhaust box on the back. So I'm painting this with a bad and black. And this is just a nice colour to add, again, more differentiation and add more interest across the model. To highlight all of the black, I'm going to use some Eshian Grey. Now, this is a nice dark grey. If you haven't got this, just mix some black and white together until you can get a nice dark grey. And all I'm really looking to do is add a chunky highlight along the edges of the model that are going to catch the most light. I'm not worried too much about it being a nice fine highlight. We'll do that in the next step. For this part, we just want to make sure that we're getting the rough outlines that we want the highlights to be. For the crisp highlights, we're going to take some Dawnstone. Now, this is a lighter grey, and this is going to be very similar to how we did the blue highlight. So just take a little bit on your brush. Make sure you've got a really fine tip and drag this along the sharp edge. Make sure this stays inside the ashen grey of the previous stage. And this is going to give you a really nice crisp highlight that's going to be inside the ashen grey. So you'll have a little nice transition going on there between the different light values. That Storm Shield has had time to dry, so it's time to apply the decals. So all I'm doing is I'm going through the decal sheet and I'm finding some funky ones that I really like. I'm going to pop them in a little bit of water, only for about 20 seconds until they start to come away from the packing paper easily. And I'm going to move them onto the model. Now I'm putting a little bit of water where I want the decal to sit. So that means I can still move it around when it's on the, pla on the model. I'm then going to wick away most of it with a little cotton bud so that I can just put it into its final position. So do this for all of the decals that you want on the model. It can be quite intimidating, so maybe practice with smaller ones first and work your way up to some of the bigger ones. So I've let those decals dry overnight and I've applied another coat of that Storm Shield thin with a little bit of water just to protect them. 
So now I'm going to highlight all of the white parts of the armor, which is basically just the weapon casings uh, or the, the weapon guards for the heavy bolter and the las cannons. And the color I'm using for that is white scar, exactly the same technique I've used previously, where I'm just dragging the brush along the edges, getting a nice crisp highlight. It's time to add a little bit of weathering to the model. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of sponge. Now, you could use any kind of sponge, blister sponge, or you could use any kind of sponge for this, such as blister sponge, or a little bit of kitchen sponge. And all we need to do is dip it in the paint, wipe most of it off, and then dab it on the model along those areas that are going to get the most wear and tear. So if you think this tang is moving forwards, the front of the model is going to get the majority of the wear and tear. You can also add some more finer highlights using a brush if you want to. And the colour we're using for this is Fenrisian Grey, which is a nice bright bluey grey colour. It will stand out against the rest of the tank. We then need to add in some of the more extreme chipping, which is where the paint has gone down to the ceramite of the tank. So the colour I'm going to use for this is Skaven Blight Dinge, which is a kind of dark grey brown colour. It's quite nice. We're going to paint this inside the Fenrisian Grey from the last step. Now the key for this is to not put it into every single bit of Fenrisian Grey. That way it stands out a lot more and will help tie the tank together quite nicely. You can use a nice thin brush for this as well because we don't want to go too overboard. It's always easier to go back and put more in than it is to try and take some off. We can add some weathering to the decals as well just by taking a little bit of Macrag Blue and just stippling it and striking it and drawing it along the white so it just shows that as the tank's moving forward they may be chipping off a little bit. I'm also going to add a little bit of a bad and black along some of the vents of the model and this just simulates a little bit of smoke and darkness there from wear and tear and mud and I'm really going to heavily put this onto the top of the exhaust as well because you imagine they've got lots of smoke coming out of them they're going to darken down quite significantly. We'll paint all of the lenses next there's quite a lot on the model so we've got lenses we've got headlamps we've got glass on the turrets as well so the first thing we're going to do is base all of these using corax white now generally this should cover in two coats but just take your time because we don't want to have to go in and correct any mistakes that we make for the headlamps i'm going to take some yand and yellow contrast paint and place this over the white that we've just painted down obviously making sure that it's dried this will give you a nice effect of headlamp glass we're then going to let that dry and we'll come back and redo the actual frame of the headlamps in a bit for all of the red lenses we're going to use blood angels red contrast paint now this is again a very easy and straightforward stage all we want to do is paint this across the glass and leaving our brush in the bottom left hand corner so we've got a little bit more paint because as it dries that's just going to simulate the, the way glass reflection works for the lenses we're just going to paint them nice and straightforward and as it dries you should get a nice brighter spot in the middle I want to put some green lenses on here as well just to differentiate from the red. So the colour I'm using for this is Striking Scorpion's Green, which is a very, very bright, almost fluorescent green. And I think it looks really, really nice as targeting lenses. We'll finish off just with a little bit of lead belcher painting the frames of the headlamps. Now, if you do make any mistakes, it's really easy to just paint that particular section of the headlamp with Corax White and then just put the yand and yellow back over it. The last thing we need to do on the tank is mat down those areas we put storm shield and the transfers and this is very easy and straightforward just take some lamy and medium and paint it all over the transfers and all over the armor panels that you previously put the storm shield on let it dry and see how it looks you may need to put a second coat on maybe even a third coat if it still looks a little bit rough but this will dull it down and it'll bring all of the vehicle into that same finished state all that's left to do is put a head on the tech marine now i'm not just going to put any head on this is a head from one of my golden demon practice pieces so in terms of the quality it's probably one of the best faces i've ever painted so there we have it this video is done the ultramarines land raider is complete and ready for battle i really hope you check out the power wash simulator dlc for warhammer 40k in the description a huge thank you once again to square enix for sponsoring this video and don't forget, you will have the opportunity to win this model if you live in the UK by following the instructions down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.